Hello Stampers, my name is Linda Bettinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made these little uh, money holders. Um, there's an awful lot of videos I've seen out on the internet and YouTube where people are making videos of gift card holders, but some of us still like to do plain old cash. And so I have designed this little uh, money holder and they're very simple to do, uh, pretty fast. And so I thought I'd share with you today, um, since I have to make a bunch of them for <laughs> for my Christmas, um, I'd share with you today what I did to put these together. So what we're gonna need is, uh, in the case of this, I'm using Real Red and Candy Cane Lane uh, Designer Series paper. So we need a piece of Real Red that is seven and a half by seven and a half. Then we'll need um, a piece of designer series paper, and this is six and a quarter inches by two and three quarters inches. Then we need another piece of DSP, six and a quarter inches by one and three sixteenths. Then we'll need. Um, a few little pieces of paper to make our tag and you'll see the difference here this one I made with cardstock as the back and this one I made with the designer series paper at the back and I think the contrast on the designer series paper is better than than this one so you need a piece of real red that measures um, let's see what is this measure it measures two inches by two and three quarters inches. So two by two and three quarters. Then you'll need a little piece of DSP that is one and seven eighths by two inches. And then a tiny piece of white that is one and five eighths by one and three quarters. Yep, one and five eighths by one and three quarters. Okay, so let me move these out of the way and I'll bring my scoreboard up and we'll just get started. So, um, in order to, uh, since this is square, seven and a half inches square, it doesn't matter which side you start on to do your scoring. And where we want to score this is we want to score this at three inches and we want to score it at three and an eighth. Uh, pardon me, another three and an eighth or six and an eighth. So six and an eighth. And then I want to score this at a half an inch on both sides. So half an inch and half an inch, okay? And there I think you can see your score lines on that. And that is the only scoring we have to do. So let me put this scoreboard away. And um, uh, we'll need to do a little bit of cutting. And um, on this, this little side here that has the short flap is going to be this flap that folds over. So that is the top of your little sleeve. And this part is the bottom. And so what we're going to do is we are going to cut away these two squares here on the top on both sides. So um, I don't think I'm going to use my bigger scissors for that. So I am going to cut away to this first half inch score line there and then I'm going to cut these two pieces two rectangles here away we just don't need them for our box and we're going to do exactly the same thing hmm. let me see here I've... there we go and so we're going to cut right down that score line on this side 
to that bottom score line and then just snip this piece off. Now, on this bottom piece, I'm going to cut a little miter corner on the top and on the bottom here. I need my little snips to get in here and get this little piece of errant paper out of here. There, that's a little neater. All right, and again, we need to just take a small miter off of both sides of this flap on the bottom. Okay, and so this is what you're left with. And what we're gonna do is fold this and burnish our score lines. So let me do that. So I will fold and line that up and burnish my score lines and on all of them including the flaps. a few rough edges on my cutting here and I think I got off my score line on this side so I'll cut that down because that needs to be nice and straight and the same thing on this side it looks like I just have a little just a little piece sticking out there okay so um, that is all the cutting and scoring there is to this like you said, it really is pretty simple. I'm going to use fast fuse, and um, oh, before I do that, I'm going to put my paper on here. And since this is going to fold up this way, and this is going to fold over, if you have a directional pattern DSP that you're using, then you're going to want to be careful which way you cut this. So this piece will go on here, face up, and this piece will go on here, also face facing the same direction. So let me use my snail here and put my DSP first on this piece and I've got a little border all the way around that paper and so now I'm going to add this piece to make sure that that's right yes just that way so the two papers going the same direction and I'll add a little snail to this and um, And on this one, I also have a little border on all four sides. There we go. Now, in order for people to be able to get the money out, and this I score just up an eighth of an inch so that it would close over real easily here. Um, and right here, I want to put a, um, a finger hole. Uh, so that somebody could get into this and um, get at the money that's inside pretty easily. And I have kind of a big circle punch. This is a one and three eighths circle inch punch. Um, but I kind of like the idea of it being a little broader since this is wider across here. So, and I'm going to make this punch um, a good halfway through and I'm eyeballing to see that I've sort of got it in the center there and cut that out. So now there's a nice wide place for somebody to see there's bills in there and for them to be able to pull those out. So now I'm going to add some fuse on my two flaps and then I'm going to fold them in and fold them up on this piece here and that will close my holder and then we'll put a tag closure like I've done 
on these others. Again, this is very fast, very simple, and um, nice because it's just handmade. So I'm going to put some fuse on both of these flaps, and I'm going to fold these ends in, and I'm going to attach these ends to both sides of my my card. Here we go. And let's see, I had a $10 bill here. Um, I figured this one out, and if you've been watching my making boxes, you'll know that I measured my bill and then add a, a little bit of margin all around to make sure that this fit. And there's my uh, money holder that the money can fit in there quite easily, be easy to get back out again, and um, really pretty simple. Now I could have put a belly band on this, but I thought it would be kind of fun to put together a little gift tag, but have it be part of the closure. So I have the pieces here that I need to make my uh, the front of my tag, and I'm going to be using my tag topper punch, and I'm going to put, I cut this piece two inches so that it would fit right in this, uh, in this punch, and there's my tag top, and so that's all I need this for. Um, then the other thing I'm doing is rounding the edges on my little white piece, and so I'm using uh, an, a corner rounder that I have here uh, just to get a slight little rounded corner on this piece. And in fact, um, no, I think I'm going to leave that be. Okay, so there we go, and that's what we have. So this piece of designer series paper is going to go on the tag, and I've made it so that it has a very small margin around. And we're going to add a little bit of snail to this, and I am going to put this on my tag. And again, very small margin, just so that I can see the red around the edge. Oh, I didn't do a very good job of that. Let's see here. There we go, that's a little bit better. All right, and so the stamping that I'm going to do is I have this little stamp that's a bow, and it is from the cookie cutter um, uh, set. No, it's not. It is from the Hollyberry Happiness, and it is this little outline of a uh, bow here that I'm using. And then I have from the cookie cutter set, I am using this little to from so that I can put a tag on my project. And I am using real red ink for the bow. So we'll stamp that. And I'll bring in my piercing mat here. And ink up my stamp. And what I've been doing is centering this bow at the top and the center of this little white piece of paper putting even pressure and holding on to that for, oh, a count of a couple, close to five seconds. And there's my bow. Then I've been doing um, the two from. On this one, I did the two from in red, and this one I did it in black, and I have to say I like the black better. So I have my black ink here and my little two from which I am going to put right here to one side of my tag. 
Oh no, it had a little piece of paper on it. Well, we'll just turn it over and do it again on the other side. So let me get a baby wipe and clean that stamp up a little bit. And let's re-stamp this. We'll put the two from right down here on the bottom in the black. There we go. Much better result. <laughs> and we will go back to the red and add our bow. And so the bow right in the center. Let me ink that up, make absolutely sure on that. And towards the top. And hold that in for just a couple seconds. That allows the ink to kind of soak into the paper just a bit. And no rocking because we don't want any extra little marks on there. And there we have our little tag. So, um, and I'll put my little tag together and get my silicone mat down here. And let's see. There's my first two pieces. Then I'll put a little bit of snail on the back of this one, making sure I put the right side up. And centering that, I made this piece of paper a little bit smaller so that you could pick up a little bit of the candy cane lane paper on the back side. And I'm sure you can do a straighter job than I did when you make yours. Um, and what I did was I raised this little tag on a couple of dimensionals. And I put a couple down here on the bottom. And I put one in the center kind of low, and then I place this tag as though it were going to sit on here and pick this end up and saw that I have this open gap here, so I put another dimensional right in there, and that's going to hold that tag in place because that's a little bit rough open and closed, and so you want to make sure that that's really stuck on there well. So we'll take these backings off and set this down and I set it so the corner of the bottom of the tag came just to the bottom of the little envelope like this and there you have the opening and closing of the envelope. Now, I did have a little bit of the thick red baker's twine, and it just doesn't take very much, um, just a couple of inches. Um, and I fed my baker's twine once I got the two ends even from the back. I could, you could do this before you put it on here, might be a little simpler. Um, and then fed those two ends through the loop. Let's see, here's my paper piercer, that'll help me. Pull those through and pull those little ends up tight to get your little tag top on there. And there we go. That's all there is to it. Real simple, real fast, and I think just very, very cute. And um, you can purchase anything that you see here on my website, uh, which is lbettinger.stampinup.net. And the prize draw for the month of December is the Birds and Blooms Thinlets set. And anybody that puts an order in with me is automatically put into the drawing. 
and in addition, if you make an order on my site of $25 or more, you get a product gift from me at the end of the month. Um, and if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to be your demonstrator. Um, and thanks again for stopping by my YouTube channel and watching my project today. And until next time, bye!